Hello, thanks for joining us today. It's Robert Ramsey and Regina Akrong with Barnes Denig. Today we're talking about reading sock reports. So much of the videos we've done have been on our work and what it takes to generate your first sock report. But today we're gonna to talk about reading sock reports. What do you think, Regina? I think it's gonna be fun. All right, me too. So as a user, let's say I am, um, I work with an organization that has uh, to request SOC reports. What do I do once I get a SOC report? Yeah, good question. So why are people asking for it and what do they do with it when they get it? It's part of our vendor risk management process. So basically um, we have certain third parties that do stuff for us. Maybe they will send our data to them, they process information for us. And as part of the vendor risk management, we kind of have to look at SOC reports. So what do I need to look out for? Yeah, thanks for adding that context. What we've done is we've kind of captured in some kind of checklists the things that we recommend folks look for while they're reading these. And I thought I could go through some of that today. That would be nice. All right, so as you said, people are on, are often requesting these for their key vendors. And then what's funny is there's no green check mark and there's nothing that says pass or fail. So that they impose a little work on the reader to know, did I get a good one? And is this what I need from it? And as we were discussing earlier, that section three can tell them a lot about the company. So that disclosure portion, they can read about their favorite kind of encryption or what antivirus they're using or how their system is designed and delivered. Okay. So that's part of it. But then the reason we have this checklist is because the opinion can be a little hard to read and know exactly what, whether it's a good report or not a good report, at least in terms of the auditor's perspective. And so, yeah, that's what we were thinking. We could talk about some of the things that are included there today. So does it help me determine that maybe the third party I'm working with is taking care of my data? Very yeah, well? totally. That's a good way to put the big picture of it. Are they doing a good job taking care of your data? Okay, so what do I start looking at? I mean, I have seen some of the reports and it includes, uh, I know it has a list of controls and the testing performed. Um, so if um, from an information security point of view, what really do I need to focus on? I think each reader has a different perspective for how much they care about from that information security point of view. So that's a good point. Some of them do care about the type of encryption and antivirus and exactly where their data resides within some cloud vendor and which sector of, maybe it's in the United States, which region it's in. Some care about what the subservice vendors are and what other companies are trusted by this provider of theirs. And so those are listed in there as all the subservices, companies that are critical to the control environment. Oh, okay. That's good to know. So. Um, for instance, will they help me see if um, they have very good um, sign-on procedures and stuff like that? It could be. If that's a part of the service and that's important, then absolutely the control environment will include sign-on procedures and access requirements and things like that. Some of the other basic things we put on here are just the time period. Like, is it current or is it a really old report? Is it, is it applicable to what you, what you need? Some companies will have multiple reports and you want to make sure it's the one for the service you're buying. So that was one of the things, like what, what actually is the scope of this report? Does it include what we're getting from this company? And then as you know, there's SOC 1 and SOC 2, and we've talked about that on other videos. But if you care about internal controls of financial reporting, you want to make sure you're getting a SOC 1. The data security you've talked about is a SOC 2, but some of them include availability and confidentiality and some don't. So if that's important, that's another thing to look for. Should I be concerned when I see exceptions on the report, should it be a deal breaker for me or is it that I can still use the service? I mean, sometimes you don't know whether you want to move on to a new vendor or you just want to stick to whoever you're having. Well, oh, that's a good question. Them. Yeah, absolutely. I think largely it depends on which control it is. So if it's one that's very important to you, like the access control you mentioned, if that seems to be failing the tests, then that would be a, maybe a deal breaker, as you said, or a negotiation item where you say, hey, company, thanks for all you do, but I'd like you to do a little better in this area. Okay. 
That's okay. one way it can be used. So in a, if, let's say, I want to review, I noticed that you provided a document that kind of lists um, stuff that I should look out for. Where would I get access to this if I want to use for my organization? Oh, I'm glad you asked. We make it available. If people reach out to us uh, on the call, click or subscribe to us at Barnes Denig, we can email it to them. These are just Word docs we keep. Okay, well, Robert, I thank you answered most of my questions. I, nothing comes to mind right now, but maybe let's say that um, I'm looking at like 20 vendors, right? I mean, my company relies on so many vendors and I have to do all this every time. Is there a short form I can use? Do I have to fill all this every time or you have some something that will capture the high level stuff that I want to focus on? Yeah, that's exactly how we could use this other list. That's a good question. It's a summary and it could be used to just capture the whole list. It could also be used on a, as a risk basis of doing like the long form for your riskier vendors, the ones that have critical data. You could use the shorter form for okay. vendors that are maybe important to the company, but not of super high risk in terms of customer data. That's why we provide two of these. Oh, good to know. Good question. Thanks so much for joining me today on the video. Thank you. I enjoyed it. You answered my questions and I appreciate it. Oh, you bet. Well, thanks for joining us on our Barnes Denig SOC video. Call, click, or subscribe and reach out if you'd like copies of, of information you've seen and have a great day.